last uh, few weeks, we've been doing a series on perspectives. Everybody say perspectives. Now, the unique thing about perspectives is perspectives are like opinions. Everybody's got one. And so you may see something. If I, I shared with you, I believe it was last week, that if a bank robbery took place and they interviewed five people or four people, they would get a different perspective from each one, even though they were at the same event, yet they're going to find out different facts, different information. Why is that? Because some things will stick out to you that don't stick out to me. For example, if Debbie and I were describing the scene of the event, and I would be saying this guy was probably about 5'10", he, you know, had a gun, he had a mask, he jumped in a, uh, you know, Corvette and took off. I, I got part of the license plate number. Debbie would be say the guy had on blue jeans that had a uh, stripe down the side. They were, I think it said Wrangler on the back, and he had on a blue shirt with a pinstripe that, you know, was kind of unique. It was a slim pinstripe, and his hair was, you know, combed back this way. He had a mask on, but he hit, I did see he had blue eyes. <laughs> Different perspectives. She asked me, I remember I was in an event, and I came back. She said, well, what were so-and-so wearing? I said, I, clothes, I guess. I don't... I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, there's a lot of things I don't see. I see them, but let me say it this way. I see them, but they don't register because I'm not, I'm a, yeah, I'm a guy. Everybody say he's a guy. 100% guy. But, but so I don't, I don't pick up on a lot of things that others might pick up on. And so that's really the, uh, why the Bible is such an authentic work uh, of history is because you've got four different people, four different accounts in the gospel. If those accounts were all the same, if they, they were verbatim, it would be strong evidence that it wasn't factual, like somebody had co corroborated a story. But because they are all sharing things differently, it's because they, they have seen it differently, so they're doing it from their perspective. So the week leading up to Easter... I'm, we started doing a series on perspectives, trying to take a look through individuals' eyes and see what their perspective of Christ was, of what Jesus was, because everybody responds to him differently. They respond according to their encounter. Now, my encounter with God was different than your encounter with God. So it spoke to me on a personal level. And it should speak to you on a personal level as well. And so we've talked about the woman caught in adultery. We've talked about Judas. We've mentioned uh, Lazarus and Paul. Today, I want to focus on an individual that had literally lost his identity. He could not answer for himself because of the situation he found himself in was filled with darkness. And so demons answered for him and when it came to his name the demons answered and said our name is legion for we're many if you would go with me to the book of matthew the i'm sorry yeah the book of matthew the fourth chapter in the 16th verse and let's read the people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death light is sprung up. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful for your word. God, it's so much more than a literary work. You told us that it was there in the beginning. It was with you and it was you. And you revealed to us that it became flesh dwelt among us. I pray God dwell in us now. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to you for just a little while today on this topic. I saw the light. Would you say that with me? I saw the light. I don't know how many of you have ever been exposed to darkness before. And I'm talking about the kind of 
darkness that kind of weighs on you, a thick darkness. Anybody here ever traveled to the Mammoth Cave? You know, when I was a child, my parents took me to the Mammoth Cave, and we went to a room, and in this room, it was a wide open space, and it was, I mean, I could see all around that room. I could see in the nooks and crannies, and if you want to find out what a nook and cranny is, get with me after the service. And <laughs> but anyway, I, I, you could see every corner of that room, and then they instructed us. They said, now, children, I, I don't want anyone to move and take the hands of your parents. And so my dad took me by the hand. And he said, now, with your other hand, I want you to place it in front of your face and just keep it there for a moment. And I put my hand in front of my face, and then they cut the lights out in that cave, and I could not see my hand that close in front of me. I remember as a child feeling chills go up my back because there's something about darkness that causes fear in us. Why? Because I can't see where I am. And it's important for you to know where you are. To grope around in darkness aimlessly is a foolish thing to do because you can wind up hurting yourself. I know firsthand. What do you mean? Well, I got up in the middle of the night, sadly to say on more than one occasion. All the lights were out. They were there. They were within arm's reach. I just decided I didn't need any light. I can navigate my way without light until I smacked my toe on the edge of a doorway. One night, Debbie's closet door was open. She's laughing. I still think she set me up. <laughs> All it would have taken was a moment of my time to say, let there be light. <laughs> but I didn't do that. And so I remember, I know you're going to think I hit my head on that door, but I, I, I honestly think I would have rather hit my head on that door. I shoved my foot under it and spoke in an unknown language. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know why, but a lot of times I do something like that, and I go, oh, oh, my papa. And she says, what is the deal with you and your papa? And I, said, I said, oh, man, that hurts so bad. Oh, what did I say? Oh, at your papa. It's a, if it translated, it means, man, that hurt. <laughs> and so I, I did all that. While I was trying to navigate darkness, if you would, guys, uh, cut those lights and hit that clip, please. You see, we've all been exposed to darkness. Sometimes when we are all alone, have you ever been in the woods at dark, man, at a place called Outdoor Education? I was in Wisconsin. They took me out into the woods during the day, and they said, now, we want you to find the spot I found a spot underneath a thicket. Then they took us back out there, and right before we got to where we had been, they made us shut off our flashlights, and it was dark. And they said, now find your spot. Man, it seems like sometimes when darkness comes, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper into it, and we can't seem to find our way out of it. It overwhelms us, and it can overcome us. Darkness in our mind, in our hearts, in in our spirit, and we, we're thinking, I, I got to break out of this, and I, I don't know how I'm going to do it because darkness has enveloped me. Have you ever been there? Legion had. What happened to him did not happen to him overnight. He lost who he was. 
he could not identify himself because the devil had taken over and was identifying who he was. I don't know what took him there. I don't know if it was a bad relationship, if it was a physical problem he had, if an addiction got a hold of him and carried him deeper and deeper into those woods. I don't know what took him there, but I know that it took him further than he wanted to go, and it would not let loose of him darkness. You say, well, pastor, we don't have to worry about anything like that. I mean, that man was possessed. Nothing like that happens today. It's a man by the name of Eric Hill, 28 years old, lived in Florida, seemingly had everything going for him. Recent college graduate, athletic build, girls liked him, family loved him. He had job offers coming in every day. But there was something going on in Eric's mind that kept pulling him deeper and deeper into darkness. Voices that he could not shut off. Images that he could not unsee. And one day, Eric walked out of the front door of the house, and he just kept walking. His sister saw him and step up on the highway and she thought well he'll be back but he didn't come back she thought she would see him again but she didn't see him he just kept walking 16 years later you would have seen eric hill still walking down the highways of texas He'd walked from Florida to Texas. His garb had turned into tattered clothing. His home was a hole in the middle of a vacant lot. And his job, not one that he got paid for, but one that he just felt compelled to do, was picking up trash every day on the side of the highways. People saw him there for years. He was a familiar figure. I don't know what took him there. I don't know the darkness that seized his mind, but it drove him from his family. His sister would have never seen him again had it not been that a car lot moved into where his home was, that hole in that parking lot paved it over and set up their business and Eric had no home anymore. He felt a pain in his stomach that doubled him over, and he wound up in a hospital with cancer, dying. No family, no cognizance of where he had come from. And they began to try and find his family, reaching out, trying to find them. Eric had lived the last 16 years in a world filled with darkness. Anybody ever been there? Thoughts that try and rob you, a darkness that creeps in slowly. Darkness comes gradually, not all at once. Legion didn't find himself where he was overnight. Just as the sun begins to set and we see darkness approaching gradually. We know that it'll be dark soon. Don't play too much longer. It's getting ready to be dark outside. Have come from our parents' voices warning us and trying to prepare us for the darkness that's to come. Debbie and I have a habit of walking sometimes on Sunday afternoons when it warms up, and there's a lane we walk down. By the time we finish here and get home, it's usually getting on toward evening time, and we have to judge the darkness. And I remember walking down this lane, trees covering it, making a canopy, and it's a beautiful lane in daylight. 
But when dark comes, it changes everything. And I remember walking down there and I told her, I said, babe, we better not go any further because it's going to be dark soon. But on more than one occasion, we misjudged the darkness approaching. And that lane that's such an enjoyable walk in the day can become a terror at night. You can't see any longer trying to navigate your way and cars fly down that country road. And it's a narrow lane. And man, there have been more than one occasion we had to get completely off the road and step over in a ditch to make sure that we didn't become a casualty. And I thought, this is dangerous. We can't find ourselves trying to navigate the dark getting home. Not just down that lane, but in the journey of life, we need a light to invade our darkness. We need someone to step into the dark world that we know and show us the light of day. And can I tell you, for this man called Legion, someone came. He did not come accidentally. It wasn't that he happened upon him because Legion made his home in tombs and Jews avoided cemeteries because it rendered them unceremonially un or that, that it rendered them ceremonially unclean. And so when Jesus went there, he went there intentionally. He knew who he was going after. He recognized a man that had been driven from family and friends, uh, that was living in a tomb and had lost control of his senses. Uh, he was cutting himself. He was crying out. No one could tame him. No one could control him. Uh, but they had never, he had never met uh, this man called Jesus. <laughs> He'd never known someone like him. When he showed up into that darkness, now people say that the Bible said that when he, he, he came into shore that that man ran toward him. And I've heard people say, well, that, yeah, that was the demons running to bow down and worship him. I've never known a demon that wanted to hang out where God was. You see, what I believe is this. I believe that in that dark heart, in that, the depths of his soul that had been overcome, there was still a voice that was crying out, somebody help me, somebody rescue me, somebody save me, and ears that are able to understand your groans and interpret them into prayers. I heard that man that day, and he stepped foot on shore. The light of the world came into his world, and Jesus began to penetrate a soul that was so dark that it had been overcome but that man crying out thought he's my only hope he's the only way I can be free and he ran to him and fell at him demons begin to cry out they begin to beg him do you understand that the God we serve can cause thousands of demons to beg for mercy don't you walk around like you don't mean anything, that you're nothing, that you have no power. The Bible said greater is he uh, that is in us uh, than he that's in the world. It hadn't always been that way. There was a time that we were all in darkness. But one day, I saw the light. I saw the light of love. I saw the light of hope. I saw the light of the world. Demons. <laughs> I wonder what their perspective was when God invaded their domain. You see, the devil would like to try and make you think that you've gone too far, that there's no way you can be rescued now. But you, they don't know the God we serve. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'll go with you. I'll come after you if I've got to go to the ends of the earth to get you. When he said, what is your name? Demons answered. For they said, this man has no identity. He has no power to break free from us. 
and our name is Legion, for we are many. A Roman legion of soldiers consisted of 6,000 soldiers. There's a reason he says legion. Thousands of demons had overcome him. But it just took one voice. It just took one man, and that man was Jesus. Thousands of demons are begging for mercy. I hope you understand who my daddy is. <laughs> I want you to get a grip of who's got a grip on you. I want you to understand that the one that spoke this world into existence said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And two trillion galaxies exploded in brilliance. And God lit up the darkness. The same way that he wants to light it up for us. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, just in case you didn't know. Go ahead, I'll, I'll give you time to find a neighbor. Just, just in, some of you folks need to watch Mr. Rogers. <laughs> just in case you didn't know, I saw the light. <laughs> There's something more powerful about that. You see, before I saw the light, the light saw me. The light entered into my world, came into my darkness, knew I was going down for the last time, and loved me so much. He said, no, sir, no, ma'am, you're not going down. I'm coming to raise you up. I'm coming to give you hope. I'm going to break this darkness that you live in. Let there be light. John 1 and 5, it said, And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Did you ever try and share Jesus with someone and they just kind of look at you like, <laughs> like they just didn't get it? I remember <laughs> when I got saved, I got, I, I mean, I got, some folks thought I was a little radical. I've calmed down a lot, folks, since then. I mean, I guess it was because I knew what he saved me from. There were so many times I was close to death, and I didn't even realize I was close to death because I was fl flirting with darkness. On Two occasions in my life, I had people walk up to me and stick a knife up in my stomach and look at me, and, 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 and there was something, and anger came over me, and I'm thinking, why? why? And I, I realized, had it not been for the hand of God, I, I wouldn't be here today. Had it not been for the hand of God, my life would have been taken out. But in the darkness, light found me. Light rescued me. Even when I didn't understand the light and know the light. See, when you've been in darkness for so long, your response to light is usually. Did you ever have one of your parents that loved you so much, cared for your well-being, pampered you, cared for you, walk into your room in the morning, flip the light on and say, it's time to get up. You don't appreciate that too much, do you? <laughs> Turn the light out. No, it's time to get up. You see, when all you've known is darkness, you tend to gravitate toward it. But once you 
are exposed to the light. And you start getting used to the light. You want to bask in the light. That's why everybody wants to go to Florida. <laughs> Let me know when I'm done. <laughs> Basking in the light. Something about sunshine fills us. It does something to us. We receive an energy boost. Do you know that sunshine is where you get vitamin D? <laughs> Do you know that every vitamin that you require in your body from A through Z is found in sunshine? Not S U N. But S O N. <laughs> Everything I need is in Jesus. Vitamin A through attitude, through vitamin B for Beatitudes, vitamin C for compassion, vitamin D for decisions, vitamin E for extra. Extraordinary. Everything we need comes from Him. We've been called out of darkness into its marvelous light. We try and share the light shineth in darkness, but they don't comprehend it. Does that mean that we're not supposed to shine there? No, because once you show someone the light, even though they may not receive it at that moment, they'll never forget they've been exposed to it. Once you share the light of his love, the light of his word, it forever stays with them, whether they receive it in that moment or not. Look at, you, you do understand that God's the only one that can open their heart, right? Right? John 6 and 44 says, no one can come, this is Jesus speaking, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent him draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Therefore, everyone who has heard, everybody say heard, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Everyone who has heard. In Ephesians 5, 8, and 9, it says, for once you were full of darkness. Turn around, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Once you were full of, we, do you understand? There's not a person in this room that at some time in their life was not sitting in darkness. We were all filled with darkness, but now, everybody say now. You have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. When you have the light, you need to share the light. Remember? Help me out. Let's see if we can get together, choir. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You ready? On three. One, two, three. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Get your light out. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I got two. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I never knew anything really about God, but when we would go visit my grandparents on a couple occasions, they took me to church with them, and we went down in a dark basement and sang about a light. <laughs> and then, the, the, so I, I, I learned about the light, and I learned about Zacchaeus. He was a wee little man that liked to climb trees. I knew that when I came out. But there's another part of that song that I learned about that light, and sometimes we forget about this part of the song. Hide it under a bushel. 
I'm going to lay it. <laughs> Wait, come here. Uh, that's why I married her. <laughs> Are you ready? Get it, get it out. You ready? Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Thank you. So when's the last time you talked to your friend about Jesus? <laughs> when you remember what he brought you from, Amen. it will squash fear. And afraid of being rejected. Somebody said, aren't you afraid of being rejected? I said, I was rejected before. And they're not rejecting me. They're rejecting him. The light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. But they still saw the light. Do you know, I can tell you from a personal experience that people that, I, I worked with a group of guys, man, that were some of the rowdiest carousers in your life. I had to, I, I, I was away from home for a week at a time. These, girl, or these guys went to pick up some girl, bringing her back to where we were staying. This is a true story, man. I am, pray, I'm, I'm like 50 miles from home. They're bringing this girl back and they're all talking, Ooh have a party we're gonna have a party I'm I'm in the other room praying I said God I need some help up here <laughs> I said I don't know I, I said I'm 50 miles from home man it was snow all over the place I said God if that woman shows up I have to leave and I don't know how I'm getting home I'm asking you to help me next morning oh by the way the girl never made it Next morning, the guy that was bringing her, they said, what, what's going on? What's going on? How, how, come, how, how come you didn't show up? We was all waiting for you. said, man, I was on my way there. said, I don't know what happened. said, my car started spinning around the middle of the road. He said, I wound up in a ditch for two hours. I was scared to death. My wife was going to come by and catch me. <laughs> this little light of mine. <laughs> Do you understand? And I look, when he's saying that, I say, praise God. Preacher, do you have something to do with that? <laughs> no, but my daddy did. <laughs> do you understand that you have to let that light shine? Those guys would razz me and try and team up on me, but when I'd get them by themselves and I'd start letting the light shine, I'd see tears welling up in their eyes, and I'd see the, they they look at me and they say, "Man, you know," because sometimes it just takes your breath away. The goodness of God, the love of God, and the mercy of God. Somebody say, "Let the light shine." So. Faith comes by and hearing what? Hearing the Word of God. Faith doesn't come by them hearing my opinion. Faith doesn't come by them hearing my interpretation. Faith comes by them hearing the Word. The Word of what? The Word of Rick. The Word of Debbie. No, it's the Word of God. And can I tell you that when the devil hears the Word of God, it messes him up. Jesus stood, withstood him in the wilderness and said, If you're the Son of Man, command that these stones be made bread. And he said, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of who? The mouth of God. What's he doing? The devil's trying to get Jesus to act on his divinity. Divinity. Because if he does, then you and I have no hope. Who am I, man? I, I'm not Jesus. I can't walk on water. But instead, Jesus squares off with the devil, and he tells him, I'm going to take you out, and I'm going to take you out as a man that's standing on the Word of God. You understand what I'm saying? The Word. 
Then he tried to twist the word darkness will try and snuff the light out you've got. And he said, well, cast yourself off this pinnacle because it is written that he'll give his angels charge concerning you to bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. I can see Jesus just look at him and smile. He said, it's also written, you won't tempt the Lord God. Get behind me, Satan. Romans 16 and 20 said, and the God of peace shall shortly bruise Satan under your feet. Well, how did you find out about that? It's what the Word said. Well, what are you doing about it? I'm picking my feet up. <laughs> I'm not dragging around. I'm picking my feet up and putting them down and standing on the Word because I know every time I do that, I'm standing on Satan. I'm stomping him under my feet where he belongs. <laughs> Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. But it goes on to say, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? Look at your neighbor and say, tell it. Tell it. Oh, come on, tell it. You never had trouble telling anything in your life. You could how many of you ever told on your brothers and sisters? Hold your hand up. You know if your hand's not up, you know you're not telling the truth. It was my job in life to let my parents know what the my brothers and sisters were doing wrong. We've always told something, haven't we? We told about how we got away with something or what we did to somebody or you know, we're always telling stuff. But there's one thing you could tell that would transform somebody's life. One thing that you could tell that could save someone if you'll just. <laughs> open your mouth and tell it. You ever, it's kind of like somebody falling off of a ship. And you're standing right next to the life jacket. And they holler up, throw it to me, throw it to me. I, I really don't know much about life jackets. <laughs> Wouldn't want to hurt you with one. If I throw it out there, it might hit you on the head. So I better just, I'll tell you what, I'll just let somebody know you're drying. Drying, that's part drowning and part dying. You're drying. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll just, I'll just let him know. I, I'll just tell him that, no, look, man, you don't have to understand everything about God. I've been preaching for years, man. I've been preaching for 40 years. I know you didn't think I was past 39. I've been preaching for over 40 years, and I still don't know everything about God. Next year, I still won't know everything about God. He's infinitely bigger than I am. He's wiser than I am. He knows more than I do. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> but here's the thing. Is what I know about him is still enough to rescue you. If I'm willing to share it. Somebody say, share it. If we open our mouths to share the word. It can transform a life forever. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you, mo that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Did he do it for you? Did he rescue you? Then don't you feel like we ought to tell somebody that if he rescued me, he can rescue you too. Tell it everywhere you go that he delivered me. He called me out of darkness into his mediocre light. Unfortunately, sometimes that's the way we act. 
but it was marvelous light. How many of you remember when he rescued you? Would you stand with me? Eric Hill was dismissed from the hospital. Sister went to find him. Hospital didn't know where he was, but a preacher did. His hole in the parking lot was gone, so he was huddled down by a brick wall. And she reached out for him. He wanted nothing to do with her. He did not know who she was. Darkness had taken away his perception, had taken away not just his ability of knowing who he was, but of knowing who anyone was. She continued to try and reach out. Her husband went home. When her husband went home, she stayed. Matter of fact, she ended up getting an apartment, homeschooling her children, and reaching out to Eric. Day in and day out, but he didn't want her food. He didn't want conversation with her. He didn't want to go to an apartment to live with her. He didn't want anything from her. And that preacher asked her, said, why do you keep trying? What's caused you not to give up? Why, don't you, why, why didn't you just walk away? And she looked at the preacher and she said, because he's my brother. And it reminded him of someone else who was a brother, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That when we said no to him, he did not give up. When we rejected him, he did not walk away. When we refused him, he still came. For God so loved the world. He kept reaching and kept hoping and kept trying. And it paid off. Right before Eric died, he recognized who she was. His mind came back. He left this walk of life knowing that he had family that loved him, that had searched for him and had refused to give up on him. He saw the light of love. There's a story of another man who's traveling down a country road at night with some friends trying to find a town that they were supposed to be at. And they traveled for hours in darkness. And this was before GPS, man. They didn't know where they were. They didn't know where this town was. All they knew is that they were surrounded with darkness. After several hours, he happened to look out through the window. And when he looked out through the window, he saw the lights of a city. He saw the lights of a town lighting up and all of a sudden he grabbed that guitar and he started strumming it in the back seat and he penned these words. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in that. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. And Hank Williams recorded it. He wrote it, recorded it, and it filled the lives and sanctuaries of people across this nation. Light. What you're longing for. Light is what you're looking for. And today, I want you to understand that Jesus is that light. If you're in this place today, you say, Pastor, I've been struggling in the darkness. I've had dark circumstances just overwhelm me. 
I've had them try to take control of me. I'm going to ask the prayer team if they would to come forward. And you feel like that maybe you've gone too far and it can't change for you. I want you to understand that there is no depth of darkness that he cannot penetrate. No cave you can hide in. No corner that he won't find you in. No devil that he won't rescue you from. And all you have to do is say, here I am, God. Here I am, God. I saw the light. The light changed me. The light transformed me. He rescued me from not just where I was, but who I had become. And he showed me who I really was in him. How about it? Are you ready today? If you're there and you, you want that, I want you to come. I want to pray for you right now as they get ready to sing this song. Would you just stretch your hands to heaven with me? Father, I thank you, God, for the light of your love. A God that shines in the dark place. I'm asking you today, God, to penetrate the shadows, Father, of disappointment, the darkness of yesterday's failures, God to break in on us and rescue us, God, from those things that try and overcome us and overwhelm us. Let us respond to your light. And God, let us walk in that light and become light in you, we ask in Jesus' name. Can you give him a hand clap of praise in here? If you, if you have a special need, I want you to come, but before you do, if, if you've got a special need, go ahead and come. But before we let you go today, this is what I want you to get. This is important to me because there's been a shift. Remember, I preached about this last spring, that this changes everything. There's been a shift, and I don't want us to forget that. If you forget where you came from, you may end up back there. You don't want to be back there. Everybody say, I'm not going back. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to purpose in your heart right now that you're going to begin to shine light yes. like you never have before. Yes. Well, pastor, how do I do that? A smile on your face, a song in your heart, a word of encouragement to someone, texting somebody or posting to somebody's page and saying just wanted to know you're on, just wanted you to know you're on my mind and I'm praying for you you have no idea how that can change somebody's world you've got no idea how that can break in Kelly and John are here today again all the way from Arkansas their daughters with them do you know why they're here it's because we decided we were going to start posting on Facebook that we would start putting messages on Facebook. And they found us, if I'm not mistaken, during the pandemic, right? In the, in the early part of it? Started listening to messages, or did you see it before then? About five, oh my goodness, man. Light's been shining for five years, and I didn't even know it. They found themselves in a difficult situation. So what did they do? They decided... They would move toward light. What do you mean move toward light? From the place that they heard it coming from. Do you understand that everybody needs to hear about light? Your voice is needed in this world. Somebody needs to hear you declare how good he is. They're not you got to get this, that there are some people that, not are, that are not going to respond to my voice. They're going to respond to your voice. They're going to respond to you because they know where you've been. They know where you were. And they know that you've been changed by the power of God. It's time for you to shake off fear and declare, 
greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Are you ready for it? I want you to grab somebody by the hand right now or bump their elbows if you don't want to touch their hand. Are you ready? I, I want you to, if you would say this with me right now. God, I'm making a commitment to you that the light of love that you shined in my heart will not be wasted. But God, I promise today that I'm going to let my light shine. I'm going to tell everybody, everywhere I go, about how good you are. I'm not going to hide under a bushel. I'm not going to hide my testimony. It is a testament to your grace and to your glory. Father, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. They're getting ready to sing. Look, look I, I want to share one more thing, and I promise I'm going to let you go. But you need to hear this. Some of you have walked in shame from your past, and you've tried to cover it, and you've tried to hide it, and that's a lie from Satan. See, what you don't understand and what Satan does know is that when you testify about what God brought you from, it has such a powerful impact because there are people all around you. See, some people think I walk on water. Not many. But if I buy into that and I try and act like that and I try and act like I've never ch had challenges or I've never faced anything, then they look at me and they say, well, man, he's a preacher, you know. What hope can I have? You know, what, what can I possibly do? But when they recognize that I was in the darkness too and that the same light that delivered me can deliver them, so this is what I want you to say with me together. Are you ready? From this day forward, I will not be ashamed of what God brought me from because it is a testimony to the power of His amazing grace. <laughs> Come on and give me a hand clap of praise in this building today. God bless you. We love you. Let your light shine. The mountains shake before you.